We thought we'd take a pie break right now. And in fact, the staff has actually provided me with a pie. Isn't that great? You know, pies are really fundamental, especially when you're looking at circles. And we thought it'd be fun just to remind you of the basic facts about circles and how pi enters into all that. So when you think about circles, you think about roundness and the beauty and the perfection of symmetry in a circle. Now, here's an experiment that you might actually enjoy trying. Um, cut out a circle whose diameter is one unit. So maybe it's like one foot in diameter, or maybe one inch in diameter or something. And cut out, so cut out that circle, and then take some string and wrap the string around the outside of that circle. So just like I'm doing here, do it nice and taut, do it nice and accurate, as best as you can. The more accurate, the better, just like this is. Okay? And then once you have that, pick up the string and measure the length of that string. Now, in fact, you can't see the ends here. Here are the ends, but the actual measurement is longer than the screen. But if you measure that length, what you're going to see is the following. That length will be, and depending upon how accurately you cut the, cut the string, that length will be 3.14159265454, and it keeps going on forever. And that number we call pi. And so it turns out, this experiment actually shows that if you have a circle of diameter 1, then the perimeter around it, which we call circumference for a circle, turns out to be pi. So in fact, a lot of people define the number pi to be this length. The length of the perimeter, the length of the circumference of a circle of diameter 1. And in fact, more generally, if you have different diameters, well, then the circumference in general will be pi multiplied by the diameter. So if the diameter were to be 1, then you just get the number pi, and that's how we define pi. But if the diameter were to be 2, then you get something bigger. And of course, the diameter is twice the radius, and so you might have also remembered the formula 2 pi r for the formula for circumference, because 2r is equal to diameter. So pi is quite a mysterious number, in fact. Um, it equals 3.1415, da, da, da. It's sort of interesting. These digits go on forever. They never, ever stop. And in fact, it took a long time for mathematicians to actually prove for certain that, in fact, this collection of numbers never stop, and in fact, they never repeat. So you won't see any repetition. You won't see some pattern that will repeat forever and ever and ever and ever from some point on. You'll always see something new. You'll always see something different. You'll never see something repeat forever. Such numbers are called irrational. Sounds like, my God, they're completely irrational, they're crazy. Well, irrational just means it's not a fraction. It goes on forever, never terminates, and never repeats. Quite mysterious, and really um, was the bane of the existence of the Greeks trying to understand it, and mathematicians for hundreds and hundreds of years, until finally mathematicians under, understood it. But it's hard to understand things that go on forever and that are infinite. Okay, well now, what can you do with pi? Well, pi, of course, gives you the circumference of the circle. It also allows you to find the area of the circle. And you know the formulas for the area of a circle... Let's see if we can figure out the formula for the area of the circle right now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the circle and say, well, gee, it's such a complicated shape. Let me cut it up into a whole bunch of pieces. This is what you constantly do in mathematics. In mathematics, if you are stuck on a problem, if a problem is too difficult, what you do is you don't do it. You try to do an easier problem. You break the problem up into pieces and try to do that. So what I'm doing here, basically, and you can try this, is I'm just taking the circle and I'm cutting it up into a lot of pieces. I keep cutting it into half and half and half and half and so on. Okay. So it's still the same circle. It has the same area as before, but I just cut it into a lot of pieces. Now, if, if I fanned it out like this, you would see, of course, the, the circle. But I'm actually going to fan it out like this. I'm going to alternate. Up, down. Up, down. And I'm going to do this until I use up all the pieces. And what you'll notice is, now I didn't actually cut this up into many pieces. If you cut this up into even smaller pieces, you would see even a finer mesh here. But what you notice is that that sort of looks like a rectangle, doesn't it? Sort of looks like a rectangle. And the areas of rectangles we know, they're base times height. And if I cut this up into smaller pieces, then in fact it would even look more like a rectangle. And if I cut it up into a lot, a lot of pieces, it would look even just perfectly almost like a rectangle.
But pretend this looks like a perfect rectangle. Then what's the area? Well, the area would be base times height. Well, the height is, well, I cut this thing from the center out, so this is just the radius. Remember how I put them together? The circle used to be like this. And you see? That length is the radius. So that's r. So the height is just r. So this area is equal to r. And then what's the base? Well, the base is all the curvy stuff down here. I've got to add all that up. But what's all the curvy stuff together? Well, all that curvy stuff, together with that curvy stuff, make the complete circle around the outside of that circle. So that actually is the circumference. So the base is actually half of the circumference. Half the circumference is living on top, half the circumference is living on the bottom, together it makes the complete circle, and so therefore, half the circumference would be half of this. Well, that would be pi r. And look what we get, pi r squared. So there you can actually see why the formula for a circle is pi r squared. We actually sort of showed why. It's basically like a rectangle when you cut it up. Now, why, why is really pi between, uh, is around 3? You can actually do an experiment. Draw a circle like this of radius 1 and draw a big square around it. If this is 1, then this is 1, so this square is actually of length 2, and this is 2. And so you see that the area of this square is 4. But certainly, the circle is inside of that, so therefore, the area of the circle, which we see would be pi r squared, which would be just pi, is going to be inside of that. And inside of this, actually, we could put another square. And if this is 1 and that's 1, then this length, using the Pythagorean theorem, is the square root of 2. The square root of 2 times the square root of 2 gives me an area inside here of 2. And so I actually do see for sure that pi is a number between 2 and 4. And in fact, it's 3.14 and so forth. You can actually compute that on a calculator if you want. But anyway, the best thing probably to do with pi, besides using it for circles, is just to eat it. So... Think about pi, think about circles, and I'm going to think about this lemon meringue. Oh, it's a chocolate meringue. Mmm, and it's delicious. Okay, back to calculus.